Hey guys, if you're a big fan of Mazda, or do you say Mazda for all of you in Canada and the UK, I'm about to show you something very special. It's the brand new, get this, 2025 CX-70. And behind the camera is my very able assistant, Zach. Say hi, Zach. Hey, how's it going, everybody? So this is a first look. So there's really not a lot of details that we can tell you about it because Mazda has not shared those details with us, but we can make some clever assumptions. So a lot of the numbers that we'll be giving you are not for the CX-70, but from the CX-90, which may or may not share powertrain. May share powertrain. All right, Zach, shall we get into it? Yeah, let's. All right, here it is, guys. Your first look at the brand new 2025 Mazda CX-70. And obviously, this has a very strong family resemblance uh, to the CX-90. But of course, the biggest difference is not here, but inside because this is a two row crossover not a three row crossover zach how much shorter is this than the cx90 so as roman mentioned officially at this point we don't know because mazda has not published official technical specs on this car yet but the cx90 the three row model is 200.8 inches in overall length so we're fairly safe to assume this is slightly shorter than that and we'll have uh, official numbers in due time. Now, one of my favorite design features is this little LED line right there. And of course, kind of that hawk-eyed look that this car has, giving it kind of that uh, very purposeful, very uh, almost predatory eyes that you would see in a bird of prey. Now, one of the things that of course makes Mazda so unique is that Mazda's never the company that's gonna build a better mousetrap but they are the company that is going to keep refining and making the mousetrap better think of the miata over generations so while they may not be revolutionary ultimately mazda is evolutionary and i think we're going to see that in this car so let's start where we always start and that is under the hood now zach there are several powertrains and we will show you the p have or plug-in hybrid at the end of this video but let's start with this one so let me open the hood and why don't you tell them what we're looking at, Zach? So I'll hint you guys in right here. So you have a badge on each of the fenders in line six. Mazda starts the range off with a 3.3 liter turbocharged inline six engine. This is an engine that debuted on the CX-90. It is also available on the CX-70 because this is Mazda's large platform. The Base engine on the lower end models of the CX-90 at least start at 280 horsepower. The high output versions go up to 340 horsepower. And then there is a two and a half liter PHEV model, which we'll show you in a little bit. Now, full disclosure here, guys. First and foremost, Zag is, Zag is an encyclopedia of Mazda knowledge, actually of all car knowledge. So he, of course, told me these numbers before we came out here and I completely forgot them, but keep in mind that's not necessarily for this car, that's for the CX-90, as Zach said, but he's also kind of a Zach. Zach, you're kind of a fanboy of Mazda, aren't you? What'd you yeah, tell him what you Yeah, I'm TFL's resident Mazda fanboy. I daily drive a Mazda 3. I've owned four of them yes. at this point, so, so that's yes. where it's at. So he's, he, he, he's, he's the guy with all the numbers, because like I said, he told them to me over lunch, and I promptly forgot them. But let's look at the inside, because this is where Mazda really shines. Now, as you guys know, Mazda has really been moving up market in terms of their interiors, in terms of their design language. You know, one of my first cars, in fact, the very first car I bought with my own money was the Mazda RX-7. And back in those days, Mazda was kind of in the same ballpark as Toyota, uh, you know, as Nissan, but now they're kind of playing with the big boys. You know, you think of these cars competing maybe with Volvos, uh, maybe even a Lexus size-wise. It's about uh, an RX size if you're in the Lexus world. If you're in the German world, maybe somewhere between an Audi A5 and an Audi A7. If there was an Audi A6, uh, same thing in the BMW world. Uh, but let's take a look inside. Hop in, Zach. Let's uh, show them what we see here. Now, one of the things that Mazda has been obviously maybe a generation behind is on their infotainment. Uh, so unlike many cars, nothing happens when you do that, Zach. And that's because we're still talking about more of a traditional, dare I say, old school interface where you don't have a touch screen, but you have to basically use buttons and then move up and down uh, through the different entertainment and infotainment options. Uh, and that still feels uh, comfortable but you know, kind of like old shoes, they're comfortable, but maybe they're not the least stinkiest. Uh, and I'm not getting down on Mazda, but you know, we are probably a generation behind. Having said that, everything else in here is 
just superb. What do you think of the interior, Zach? I mean, I think elegant is the best word to describe it. Um, Mazda has obviously been making an upmarket push over the last couple generations, right? And it really shines through in their latest offerings. So you have, you know, nice plush leather on the dash and the steering wheel. You have, you know, nice little silver ring. They don't, it's not over the top, but it does feel properly luxurious for what most people have considered, at least until the last few years, to be a more mainstream brand. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, you know. Uh, elegant touches like this frank stitching over here with a little bit of black inlay to match the exterior color of the car. This steering wheel, same thing. I love how this red accent stitching just makes this steering wheel, which just comes to hand so readily, so comfortably, so elegant. Um, not only that, but it's also very purposeful. Same thing with the instrument cluster. Obviously, you've got uh, miles per hour. I don't think it'll do 160, by the way. I think that's being very optimistic. <laughs> Actually, uh, it will not. So even in Mazda's official spec tech, again, for the CX-90, the high output version, um, according to them, tops out at 130. Yeah, and, and I actually love the shifter that they've used here. Uh, you don't have a rotary dial or push buttons or, you know, some stuff that uh, other companies are now doing instead of, you know, a traditional uh, PRND. And I, I do like that. We do have hill descent control. Uh, we have cameras, uh, as is the way with all cars now. So um, Mazda rented this very expensive house here in Encinita. Encinita, right? And seen, I'm and sorry, seen, I seen don't it. know the local area yeah. well. <laughs> anyway, it's where it's where all of the rich people live in California, uh, and uh, you know to kind of highlight the fact that they're you know playing with the big boys. I also love you know uh, these real HVAC controls, which is nice. So it's not all in the infotainment system. Uh, you know, once upon a time uh, buttons were cool. Then now with Tesla they became uncool. But in my mind they're cool again. Uh, obviously, we've got different drive modes, so we've got sport. You can show them over here. Yep. Uh, normal. Oh, look at those! Look at that, Zach. Look at it turned red. You know that's fast, right? When it turns red. You got normal, um, and then of course you have off-road. Uh, so, yeah, some uh, you know, very typical different drive modes, and that usually affects you know how the steering works, uh, how how much throttle tipping you have. Yeah, transmission oh, mapping. mapping. Yeah, We're not looking at active uh, suspension here, so we don't have air suspension, uh, but we do have uh, different drive modes. Do you want to sh can I show them how it turns red again? Yeah, cool. sure. All right, let me Absolutely. Do it. Let me do it one more time. There we go. Come on, go to sport. So I thought, one thing I thought was cool is when you do that, not only does the color change, but the texture also changes in there, so that's a nice touch. Yeah, it is a nice touch. Um, you have memory seats over here, uh, which is nice. Mazda still uh, does, you know, traditional buttons for memory seats, which I like as well. Uh, some of those new functions are, you know, now being put into the screen. Uh, and, and as much as I was kind of whinging about, you know, the fact that it's one generation behind, it's kind of refreshing that, you know, that we still have buttons so that when we want to change, uh, you know, something very basic, uh, we can do it with a push of a button instead of having to dig through an infotainment screen that might be five, ten uh, pages deep before you get to it. And of course, you've got you know your full safety uh, suite of uh, of safety features, including blind spot monitoring. What do, what do you get, Zach? You know, you're you're more of the Mazda dude here in terms of safety. So Mazda calls their safety suite Eye Active Sense, mm -hmm. and you get basically the suite everything you could possibly expect in a modern car. So. Um, automatic emergency braking, high beam assist, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, lane departure warning, um, lane keep assist. Uh, one feature Mazda is actually touting with the CX-70 in particular is they updated or upgraded, I guess you could say, their um, traffic and cruising assist to have what's called unresponsive driver support and we can't really demonstrate it but what it'll do basically is it will say you know if you're there behind the wheel okay, I'll, I'll demonstrate yeah right, sure here i'm driving okay and all of a sudden i go so the car will detect that <laughs> by way of the other systems <laughs> and if it figures out basically that you're unresponsive you're having a medical episode um some kind of incident there will be a, an escalating series of alerts and then the car will determine okay clearly you're not responding and the vehicle will decelerate and come to a stop as safely as it can on its own hey being here you know just outside of hollywood for all you hollywood agents out there or uh film directors or producers He's if, available. Yeah, yeah, if you like my acting, I don't have an agent, but info at TFL Car, you know, I, I do a really good, like, you know, compromised driver. 
All right, uh, let's talk about some other things we've got. <laughs> we've got heated uh, steering wheel, heated seats, which is nice. Uh, and, you know, kind of everything you need and nothing you don't. And of course, at the end of this video, we're going to take a guess at how much this costs because we kind of know how much a CX-90 costs, right? Yep. And we know how much a CX-50 costs. So we can kind of guess at how much a CX-70 costs. But let's go in the back seat. Let's see how much room there is. By the way, lumbar support, love it. Uh, really, I have a back problem, and so it really is comfortable. Big switches, easy to find, didn't have to spend. Is it four-way adjustable lumbar support? Does it go up and down as well? Is it, it is not, Zach. It is See, that's the one thing, and I'm glad Tommy's been covering yeah. that in videos more recently, because that's one thing that, one really minor detail that kind of you, bugs me. You like when it goes up and down. Yeah, I need to be able to adjust where that lumbar is at to have the best support. And also, by the way, on this particular climate setup, mm -hmm. you see these blank switches here? Yeah, what are so we not certain getting? higher trims, we do not get ventilated seats here. Uh, but they will be available on upper trims of the CX-70. So, so very old school, in, in other words. Yeah. All right, well, let's jump in the back. Um, you could say this is kind of the business end of the vehicle because, of course, uh, you know, this is a vehicle uh, for families. Uh, and one of the cool things you'll find, note immediately is this. Uh, is this. It actually uh, reclines. That would not be comfortable. But yeah, you go the other way, it would other, be a little bit more way. comfortable. Very comfortable. You've got your privacy screen here now, so very luxurious. Dare I say bougie, Zach. Uh, big old sunroof, so it doesn't feel claustrophobic back here. And of course, we have uh, two USB-C ports and not individual climate controls, but at least, you know, one climate control so you can make yourself comfortable in back and actually vents that not only blow on your feet. I have tons of foot room, Zach, look at that. Uh, I have uh, tons of headroom. I have tons of shoulder room, and I bet you I even have a nice little uh, shoulder rest, elbow rest back here if I wanted. It's, it's like even with the mostly panoramic sunroof there. Yeah, I know. Usually days. panoramic sunroof takes at least two inches, right? Exactly. Of headroom. And look at this, you know. Yep, Nathan, I've got hair, so plenty of room for my hair. <laughs> All right. That's comfortable back here. I could, I could actually cross country this deck. Seriously. That wouldn't be too bad. Now, speaking of cross country, how much room is in the back? Let's well, we actually have some gear in the back here, so we can visually demonstrate that. Again, we don't have any official numbers yet. And you'll note that CX-70 all-wheel drive. Uh, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's move this forward. You can see we've got a uh, suitcase here. That's a lot of room, dude. It is. Yeah, that's a lot of room. Backpack, somebody's day bag here. I always like to see what's underneath uh, the little floor here. That's a lot of room. So we've got a little cubby here, and then I, I take it if we if we if we lift this up. Yeah, if you lift up the panel a little bit like that, you do in fact have a spare tire, which is always well. Not received. a full size one, but still, it's useful even to have a temp yeah. rather than just a you know can of fix a flat. And the Ma Mazda has done something that a lot of other people have already, but now you have uh, folding seats with a push of a button. How sweet is that? But. Let me show you something, Zach. This, this is what is, I think, for me, probably the most impressive. Look at this. Let me I'm gonna move that. Look at this. Flat floor. How about that, dude? See, and that's kind of one of the main pitches for this vehicle, yeah. particularly, right? Because this is just, it is a two row model and not a three row model, you don't have this third row seat here taking up space. You know, it's funny. I was just in Japan, right? Yeah. And uh, it's amazing, like, how small the cars in some places like Tokyo are, right? The, the little tiny K vans. Uh, but at the same time, they have these massive vans like the Alfred. Uh, and so when you know Japan decides to do, for the next person, I don't wanna keep it dirty. When Japan decides to do something with a lot of room, it has a lot of room and this has a lot of room. So I could see, dang, this could be like, it could be like a four Bernie's mountain dog family. Uh, and you would have enough room for, you, your wife, or significant other, and of course, two kids, and let's say two, maybe three Bernie's Mountain Dogs. On the so CFL you're saying scale. if you were to get one of these, Blaze would be, probably be getting a couple brothers or sisters? Yeah, and he, you know, he sheds like crazy. <laughs> Being black inside, be perfect, you'd never see it. Oops, it didn't quite close. Wonder what happened there. Anyway, um, before we figure out, oh, does this open as well? No, that doesn't open. No. no. So, well, here, let's figure that out real quick. Yeah, I think it's this. I, yeah. yeah. Sorry, that, that was, was my bad. fault. Yeah, so that was my fault. Let's try that again. I don't want to show a car misbehaving when it's my fault. Uh, so, um, let's head on over uh, to the plug-in hybrid and talk about that, because if you want something that's got a little bit better fuel economy, Mazda's got you covered. All right, guys, you'll notice that there's an E in front of Skyactiv and then a P have 
behind Skyact. And of course, PHEV stands for Plug-in Hybrid Vehicle. Uh, so this is Mazda's second PHEV, the first one, of course, being the CX-90. And what you have here is a car with a 17.8, let's call it 18 kilowatt hour battery that gets about, uh, well, if it's a CX-90, 26 miles of all electric range. Uh, and will charge, if you're on a level two charger, Zach, what, two hours? Two hours and yeah. 20 minutes approximately from completely dead to completely full. And again, these are CX-90 figures, so we expect they'll track more or less unchanged with the CX-70, give or take, you know, a little bit of time and a couple miles of range. And if you plug it in the old fashioned way, which is into a socket in your house, then you're looking about 11 hours uh, to fully uh, recharge this battery. So of course, the question you might be asking yourself, what's the fuel economy? Well, that we don't know. Uh, but we can certainly show you what is under the hood. And once again, we're taking a guess at it. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Based on the CX-90. But uh, yeah, let's show them what's under the hood. What are the numbers, Zach? So under the hood here, as I uh, mentioned earlier at the top of the video, we have a 2.5 liter. If it were CX-90. <laughs> yeah, if it were CX-90. 2.5 liter sky active four cylinder engine, naturally aspirated, coupled to 173 horsepower electric motor driven by a 17.8 kilowatt hour battery. So combined output is 323 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque. Assuming you're running on 93 octane fuel, Mazda is very particular about that. You can run it on 87. If you do, it's just gonna derate itself slightly. All right, I'm gonna try to stump you, dude. Okay. What's the MPG on the CX-90? So again, it depends on the powertrain yeah. and the model you get. Uh, for the CX-90 P have, I'll start with that one since we're standing in front of it. Um, combined MPG EPA rating again for CX-90 on gasoline only is 25. And the uh, turbo inline six uh -huh. is 24 to about 26. They're all in that mid to upper 20s range. Yeah, which is really good for a big uh, family slash uh, Bernie's mountain dog hauling uh <laughs> crossover slash SUV. Um, so let's make some educated guesses now because we promised you guys at the beginning of this video we're going to talk about how much the new CX-70 is going to cost. Let me ask you two questions and then I think we can get down to the real number. How much is a CX-50, Zach? Uh, 690? No, right. 50 first. Let's oh, 650. Yeah. Those start in the kind of low $30,000 range and then end in the upper $40,000 range. The CX-90. You, you, you knew what I was going to ask next. <laughs> I beat you to the punch. Starts at about $41,000, and at least for the turbocharged trims, ends up a little over 60, 61,000. And the uh, PHEV models top out around 58. So, so somewhere in between, right? Somewhere in between uh, exactly. is where this car is going to fall. So you figure on the low end, probably in the 40s, maybe low 40s right, to maybe mid 50s on the high end? Yeah, we're, we're po guessing. possibly upper 30s. It depends on the trim walk. Again, sure. we're assuming the CX-70 is gonna track with the same trim walk uh, as the CX-90 and indeed a lot of other Mazda crossovers. So you start with your base model, you start with select, then you move up to preferred, premium, premium plus. And as you do that, you get more features and inevitably it costs more money. So. Yeah, high $30,000, maybe low $40,000 range. Again, that's an educated guess at best. We won't have official numbers for months. Um, and then top out, yeah, somewhere in the $50,000 range. Do we know when it's going to hit the dealerships? Uh, later this year, I don't that's a know, big in number. the coming months. That's I don't know big... exactly yeah. when. All right, guys, well, there you have it. Thank you for joining me for this first look at the brand new 2025. Gosh, that's crazy uh, Mazda CX-70. Now for all you aging journalists out there, journalists, auto journalists, um, I would highly suggest that you find your own Zach. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't have ours <laughs> because, like I said, I, I had all these numbers in my head until I got here. So thank you very much, Zach. I don't think I could have done it half as good of a job on this without you. I can really only do it with Miles, to be honest. <laughs> no, don't believe him. He can do it with everything. All right, guys. Uh, remember, go to alltfl.com uh, for all the greatest and latest news. And remember, I will see you next time. Ciao.